This video is going to be about the book, namely The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is the English version. This is the Dutch edition. And Childhood Memories. Look at how pretty the Dutch edition is. You have sparkles and Neil Gaiman's handwriting in it. It's very beautiful. But I did read it in the English edition only because, well, I love English and I got this one, this one signed. So, yay! Neil Gaiman started uh, writing The Ocean at the End of the Lane as a short story meant for his wife to show her about his childhood because a lot of the places aren't there anymore and the only way he could share it with her was by describing it. It is not an autobiographical book but it because it wouldn't be a Neil Gaiman book if there weren't some strange, wonderful, scary things happening. The Ocean at the End of the Lane takes us into the life of a seven-year-old boy in such a way that it had me recognizing things from my childhood, even though it was very different. I was never a little English boy in the 70s, but this book made me feel like I was. Gaiman captures into words the universal truths about childhood. The things that matter when you are so young, and how a kid can feel powerless in the clutches of an adult, well-meaning or otherwise. He strikes a tone that is so truthful about childhood memories that it makes me think about how I remember some of mine. I had a coat. It had belonged to my stepsister and then it belonged to me. It was a greyish blue fabric that was really soft on the outside and then when it got wet it would become really heavy and dark. And on the inside it had a coarse grey fabric with long fibres. But not the kind of coarse that makes your skin red, the kind that feels like a hug. It was large, with a big hood that I could disappear in. On the cuff of the right sleeve there was a little burn mark that had happened before I'd got it and it felt really nice uh, to rub my fingers over it. It had really deep pockets that could fit all sorts of interesting things like pebbles and sticks. It was a perfect coat to go out adventuring in. There were these woods behind our house. On one side they were bordered by a pebble path and on the other side the ground sloped up until it reached the fence behind which lay train tracks. These woods were perfect for exploring. They belonged to our neighbor, a nice older lady who never minded me and my brothers playing in it. At least I don't think she did. I don't actually remember ever asking. <laughs> in those woods I would discover strange plants and trees that I could climb in and twigs of which the inside seemed to be made out of sponges. There was also a little hill right next to the path. It was covered in ivy and I could lay flat on one side so that I could see the path from a higher vantage point without being seen myself. This is where I would jump from to ambush an imaginary convoys of food so I could feed the imaginary rebels living in the woods. I remember doing that in my greyish blue coat. But when I think about it, something doesn't add up. I did most of the exploring of those woods when I was in primary school. But I didn't get that coat until I was around... 13, at which point I was in secondary school already. And then I started to think that it doesn't matter, that it didn't really happen exactly in that way, I remember it. The memories fit together. And like in the ocean at the end of the lane, that doesn't actually make them any less true. If you haven't read the book yet, stop watching the videos now because there will be spoilers ahead. I'm serious. Stop watching and go read the book, because it's awesome. I just want to share how perfect I think the ocean at the end of the lane is. It is such an amazing adventure. I just love the symmetry that's in it and a lot of things rang very, very true for me. Throughout the book I kept imagining our protagonist as young Neil, because he's based on young Neil. And a moment when he is sitting outside in a circle waiting for Letty to return and he, and he's so scared and everyone and, and all the creepy crawly things are trying to get him out, uh, out of the circle by pretending to be everyone and uh, his dad is there and, it's not sh and he's not sure whether it's actually his dad or someone trying to pretending to be his dad and he's thinking about having the hole in his heart a little piece of the pathway and it just made me think about oh so that's where the stories come from he has a little gate in his heart where the stories come through and then the whole thing with Letty happens and I did not see that coming and then when he gets dropped off back home and Ginny says he was over because of Letty's going away party and she's gone to Australia and then it clicked for me and I was like no he's not going to remember this because he in the beginning of the book adult adult Neil thinks about how she moved to Australia or something. And then we learn that he comes back every couple of years when he's around so he can remember everything and Letty can have a look at him and how he turned out. It fits so well and it's such a beautiful story but it's also kind of sad and those are kind of the best stories. There was one quote at the end of the book when Ginny is driving him home that really hit me personally and it's this one. It is hard enough being alive, trying to survive in a world and find your place in it, to do the things you need to do to get by, without wondering if the thing you just did, whatever it was, was worth someone having, 
if not died, than having given up her life. It wasn't fair. That quote rings so true for me personally. Um, because I know that when my mom died, I internalized a lot of that, thinking that I would have to... I would have to live a better life, because I was living for her as well. And I think a lot of us do that. When you're a kid and you lose someone, that you sort of think that because they're gone, you have to be extra good at living. And living is hard enough to do it for just one person. So in the end, when he asks, did I pass? Because Letty wants to look at him to see if it's worth the sacrifice she made. Then he gets the answer, you don't pass or fail at being a person. And I think that's very, very beautiful, because it's true. That doesn't mean that whenever I read this book, because I will read it again and again and again, I will automatically think about my mom when I get to that bit. Because it's a book on its own right, it's very good, even if you don't recognize the same things I recognize in it. I wanted to share how it made me feel. Now I'm gonna have some tea.